Okay, so if we take a look at this task number four, um, you can see here I, I, a little bit as on Amazon or Google reviews, I rated them with some stars for the difficulty and this has just 0.5 out of three. So it should, at the end, it should not be too difficult. Um, okay, so we have a schematic given. Um, what, what should this symbol be here? It's a source and it's a current source. If, if the, vo if the um, <coughs> line would be in this direction, then it would be a voltage source. Um, if the line is in this direction or if it is, yeah, let's say, perpendicular to the connections, then it's a current source. And what does current source mean? Current source fixes the current. So, um, no, no matter what will happen, the current source will always try to push this current here forward and it can adapt to any voltage. So the voltage that we could have here, we will talk about voltage later, but the voltage could, could have any value, let's say. Okay, so then what should this symbol be here? Resistance. This is resistance and it's the, this is the American symbol for the resistance in in Germany, in Europe, in the UK, and so on, we typically use this symbol for resistance. Um, but I thought, okay, this is some international engineering science bachelor course. So I decided, okay, let's use these American symbols for resistance. Okay, and we have a circuit. Um, and yeah, this is some not too simple, but not too complicated circuit. That's the, the right level of difficulty I would say desirable difficulty and um, all these arrows here they mark some current some current that is flowing through one of these lumped elements in some circuit schematics especially in older ones you will also sometimes find current arrows that look like this and that should also mean okay there is a current of I don't know, the same I1 here, <laughs> 2 ampere, flowing through this element. Um, but I don't like these type of current arrows because you can confuse them with voltage arrows. Arrows, not, not arrows, a arrows. Um, and so um, a, a current, and, and this is also some, some kind of important thing if you speak about this, a current is always flowing through some element and a voltage is across an element. Um, a, a voltage is a difference of two potentials, and so this is truly some voltage arrow that you have across some element, and this would be some um, current arrow, current that goes through an element. Okay, mm, yeah, and now we have, let's maybe circle them, so we have um, some values given here. So these are the values that we already know. This is this one here, this <coughs> one over there, and this one here. And, um, and the other things we want to know, they, they are unknown. Um, so these ones here, this is, these are the ones that we should calculate. This one here, and this one there, and this one from the source. And now the question is, how do we do this? So we know that the income or like the inflow and outflow of uh, the currents needs to be in some zero. So for example, uh, IAB would be I4 minus I2. Okay. So um, what you have learned in the lecture is uh, uh, exactly what you said is Kirchhoff's current law, uh, abbreviated as KCL, uh, named after, after some German engineer and mathematician, Gustav Kirchhoff, who, as far as I remember, um, was born and lived in, in Königsberg, which is now Russian Kaliningrad at the Baltic Sea, and later on moved to, uh, to Berlin. And interestingly, he, so he, he worked quite a time in, in Königsberg and this was kind of a, let's say, scientific and cultural center of the Germany already at this time, so far east of Germany. 
Um, and what is, what is interesting, I think, about him, he, he married the daughter of his mathematics professor. So now you have some impression of him. Um, okay, and so this Kirchhoff's current law says that if we have a, uh, if we have a node, so this, this here is a node, then the sum, you could write it in two different ways. You can say the sum of the, of the incoming currents must be the same as the sum of the outgoing currents. So if we take, let's, uh, let's maybe uh, start with this node A here because this one is already labeled. So if we have this node A, then we can say the sum of the incoming currents and the incoming currents, uh, there's just one incoming current here, this is the current I1, must be the same as the sum of the outgoing currents. And this is um, A3 plus IAB. So this would be some way to write this. Um, and the, the other way would be to say we take the sum of all the currents and currents that are going into the node, are we, we count positive and currents that go out of the node, we count negative um, and then this total sum must be zero. And we could just, if we, um, yeah, if we say minus I3 minus I, uh, this current, then they would co go to the other side, then it would be like uh, zero is I1 minus I3 plus IAB. Then it would be minus. Uh, very good, excellent. Then um, from a mathematical point of view, it's the very same formula. Um, just from an engineering point of view, maybe a different way to um, to write it down. Let me shortly check if my if everything works here, but this looks good. Okay, so um, yeah, now we can we can also write this down for node B, for example. And for node B, how would this equation then look like? Um, say louder, a bit louder. So the sum of these two currents must be the same as this one here, right? Okay. And so luckily now we found um, a formula where we know two of the currents because we know this one and this one. So we can calculate this one IAB um, from this equation. Mm, so it should just be the difference between I4 and I2 and we could uh, insert these values which is 4, uh, um, four and 2, uh, 4 and 3, right? And so this should be one up here. And then we can, okay, if I, if I um, add these values here to the circuit. So this is two ampere. This is, uh, as we have just calculated, one ampere. No, it's not two ampere, it's three ampere. I'm so sorry. And this is always a problem with this program. So this is three ampere, this is one ampere. And then, okay, if 3 ampere and 1 ampere are flowing onto this node, the outgoing current should be 4 ampere. And this is exactly what is given here. Okay, and I mean now, um, yeah, how, how do we continue? So we can just take I3. Mm -hmm. so now, now, now we also already know this current here, so we could uh, rearrange this formula in a way to calculate I3. So I3 would be I1 minus IAB. And so I1 as given here is two ampere. Uh, IAB as we've just calculated is, uh, is one. 
So we end up um, 2 minus 1 is 1 ampere and we have, we should get 1 ampere over there. And this also makes sense in a way that if we have 2 ampere flowing into this, onto this node here, then they will split up and 1 ampere will go this direction, 1 ampere will go this direction. So this also makes sense. Um, yeah, and then we could write a last <coughs> Kirchhoff's current law maybe for this node that I will call C. And if we do it for the node C, how does the formula look like? Exactly. So IS is I1 and I2, and we already know, or we have known I1 and I2 from the beginning. It's 2 and 3. And therefore, we end up with 5 ampere for this very current at the source there. And taking a look, this once again perfectly makes sense. I mean, it's this, the, exactly this equation there um, at the bottom. Okay, so now we have successfully uh, determined all the all the missing currents. Yeah, so it was this one here, it <laughs> was this one over there, and it is this one here. Um, yeah, so we finished this task. <laughs> okay, there, there's a question. Do you have a question regarding the formality? Is it necessary to always pinpoint at which point you're working at the moment? So yeah, so I would I would say it's it's not a bad idea to somehow um, um, make it visible or to make it comprehensible for which node you write down a Kirchhoff's voltage, uh, a Kirchhoff's current law. It's just that if you, um, yeah, for the for the exam, let's say, mm, if it's understandable what you mean, it's it's maybe not necessary, but it's just a letter. It's just a letter here. And if you look at your calculation two weeks later, you will yourself much better <laughs> understand what you meant with the calculation. So I would, uh, I would strongly encourage you to, to uh, label these nodes, give them names, and <laughs> to also write down the name of the node for the um, current law. OK, more questions. Then we can maybe discuss um, what would happen if I write down, because we have some other node here, we, we have this node that I could call D. Um, what would happen if I write down a Kirchhoff's current law for the node D? That's an idea. Exactly. And um, so if we if we check this calculation here, we would find out okay, one ampere plus four ampere um, is also five ampere. So this fits and it should fit. And if we do some yeah, some more manipulation with this. And uh, l let me once again start with this um, current law here at the node D and say, okay, I3 plus I4 is the source current. And now if we take this equation here that we had before for the current I3, Mm, let me let me mark this. I still have some colors left here. So if we use this and insert this over here, and if we take then also this equation here, mm, do I have a color left that I've not yet used? Yes, this one here. So and then if we also use this equation and insert this equation over here, what do we get? We get, um, so for I3, I insert I1 minus IAB. And for the current I4, I insert this equation, <laughs> I2 plus IAB. And on this side, I do nothing. I just copy the source uh, current. And now we can 
uh, not really cancel, but yeah, more or less cancel um, th these two currents because the sum of them will be zero. And we end up with I1 plus I2 equals the current through the source. So what, what happened? We get the same equation that we had here on first place, uh, namely at uh, here, this one here, right? Now we, we get the um, um, equation of the Kirchhoff's current law of the node C. So we started with the law of the um, node D, then we inserted A and B, and we ended up with C. So what does this mean? from a mathematical point of view. It means that this is some, this now in this case, in this example, um, this is some dependent equation. So we have four nodes that I numbered or labeled A, B, C, and D, and we could write down four Kirchhoff's current laws for the four nodes, but only three of them are independent. So it would be if you have k nodes, there's always only just k minus one independent Kirchhoff's current laws for a circuit. Um, and if you later on, if we later on want to calculate circuits, mm, what we do is we write down Kirchhoff's current laws and we write down Kirchhoff's voltage laws and we ins so the current laws will um, will give a relationship bring a relationship between the currents the Kirchhoff's voltage law will bring a relationship between the voltages and then we need at each element some equation that gives us a relation between current and voltage like Ohm's law and then you have all the equations that you need to calculate the circuit but of course, from a mathematical point of view, so, so you end up with a system of equations, but the system of equations is only, can only be solved if the equations are independent from each other, if each equation brings new information. And so here, as we have seen, we have written down four of these Kirchhoff's current laws, but only three of them contain new information. The, the fourth equation is always dependent from the others. Or yeah, the so I said if the if the if there are k nodes, we have k minus one independent uh, independent Kirchhoff's current laws, um, and this is something important. So you can you can um, count them and then just say minus one of them will be independent and it will be it, it's quite simple to find these independent current laws in this case okay this is the one thing that i would like to discuss do you have more questions related to this that came up in the meantime okay this seems not to be the case so oh there is one is the last node always the no, no, no. It's you can you uh, you could do the very same trick with if you use the equation of C, for example. If if we would start with with C and insert <coughs> A and B, we would end up with D, for example. Yeah. So it's always k minus oh, it's one. Always either the, the start one or the last one. You it, it would also be the the this one in the center. Okay. You could always take three of them, and if you if you insert the three. Um, so in this example, because in this example here we have four nodes, yeah, but but so if you take three, you will always, or if you if you take the if you take yeah. k minus one, you will always end up with the last one, no no matter of the order. Okay, and some other thing is that that I would like to discuss is so um, this this Kirchhoff's current law. What does it mean? So current is moving charge. So if the charge changes, you have a current. Um, and the charge is some conservation quantity. So car charge 
cannot appear and disappear randomly. <coughs> um, charge is always fixed and you can only move charges from one place to another place. And so this Kirchhoff's current law is just something, some, some extension, let's say, of this conservation of charges. Because it means that if you have a current, uh, if you have a node, then in this node, charges cannot randomly appear and disappear. In this node, charges always have to flow onto the node or, or flow away from the node. This is more or less what, what this Kirchhoff's current law means. And we can also, let's say, expand the, the current a little bit or, or make the, um, uh, not, not the current, uh, expand the node a little bit, make the node larger and um, let, let me take a different color, maybe green, that I have not uh, get used so far. So you could also write down um, a Kirchhoff's voltage law by, by taking, instead of a node, taking a closed circle, this is not really a circle, but let's say taking a closed loop, and now check <coughs> what currents go into this loop and what currents go out of this loop. And if we, for, for this loop here, we we'll check this, at, at this border here, um, or at this boundary, the um, current IS would go in, and at these two boundaries here, or at this border, the two currents, I3 and I4, they will exit. And okay, then we see, okay, now we have written down the very same in this case as this nodal equation here for the node D, but this also works. So you can also write down the Kirchhoff's voltage law, not for, um, for lamp node, let's say, not just for um, some singular small node. Um, you can also extend the node, draw, a circle, a sphere, a loop somewhere and check what are the currents that go out, uh, that go in and that go out of this area. Because <laughs> it will be at the same, the very same law of conservation of charge in this case. Okay. More questions? Then, yeah, there's one. In this case, which one is the dependent one? Um, oh, in this case, which is the, the how, how many you can set up and which is the dependent one, then this does not work anymore. Okay. Yeah, so because here you can, you, you could draw random um, surfaces uh, in this schematic. So this, for, for the K nodes, you, you only really count nodes. Mm -hmm. So here it's difficult to say how many of these, because, yeah. Um, if I would extend this to go to here, for example, um, it, it looks different, but it's still the very same surface at the end um, because I, I've just moved this border from here to here. Um, so in this case, it's difficult to count. Okay, and then the last thing that I would maybe like to show in for this problem and therefore I have already um, explained before <laughs> so there's a nice circuit simulator that we can also use in this case to calculate this problem it's called LT spice um, the abbreviation LT comes from linear technology this was let's say the sponsor the developer of this program but then a couple of years ago linear technology was called uh, was bought by analog devices but this name LT spice was so popular that they did not rename it to AD spice let's say and you can download it for free um, and it's a very from my point of view very small and very powerful software uh, for Windows and for Mac and I have already opened it up on my computer. Um, and if you start it, it looks like this. And now we can set up a new schematic. And I will maybe try to rearrange this a bit that I have the, um, no, that I have this on this side and the circuit simulator here. And there's the circuit, okay. And now once again, we, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the problem is we, for this problem, we cannot 
we don't know the values of these resistances and we don't yeah we 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 don't know the value of the source because we want to calculate the source. So we have to, uh, let's say, bend the functionality of the program a little bit um, to, to solve our problem here. And we have to start with the known current. So we know the current I1, I2, and I4, which is this current here, this current, and this current. And so for these currents, I will use current sources you find the current sources under component and current. And so I will use the current source here, I will use the current source here, and I will use the current source over there. And I will rename this so that it's the same name as in my task sheet to I4. And I can also already give them a value and say this is 2 ampere, this is 3 ampere, and this is 4 ampere. Okay, and for the other elements where I don't know the currents yet, so for, for this one here, for this one, even for this one there, even if it's a short circuit here, and for this one there, I will just use simple plain resistances, and the resistor I said this is the American symbol can be found here, so I will put this one here. Um, so then I will put the second one here in the center. And now what you need to know a little bit is that the current through this resistor is counted downwards in this case. And of course, now I need to rotate this, and I can rotate it with, uh, th this is written here in the, in the lower left corner of the screen, type control R to rotate. So if I press control R, I can rotate, and so now the current is counted to point into the left direction. But on the, if, we, if we check here, we want to have we would like to have to point it to the right. So I will, I will rotate it once again. So now current would point upwards and now to the, to the right. And current would is still pointing to the right, now downwards to the left and upwards again, because here for the source current, um, in this case, we want to have to point it upwards. Okay, so then let's maybe just rename them to not confuse it too much. So this is R, A, B, this is R, 3, and this would be R, S for the source. Um, if you sp press space, then uh, maybe I will make it a little larger. If you press space, then it will always zoom to fit the screen. And otherwise, you can zoom with the mouse wheel. Um, so I will zoom out a bit. There's a wire tool here to wire everything together. I will just draw the outer loop at first. Like this, like this, like this. And then you can see if you connect these wires, then these soldering points will disappear and uh, nodes will appear here. And um, what LT Spice does, it does nodal analysis to calculate this. We will talk about this in the lecture later. And for this, it will automatically number the nodes. So if you, once again, if you check this lower left screen here, it says, okay, this is node one, this is node two, this is node three, this is node four. Um, and we can also give these nodes names with this label here, so I can label this as A and I can label this as B as in the exercise before on the solution before and I will label this one C and once again connect them. Oops. So uh, I will not label this as D, I will tell you why in a second. And we need values for the resistances and I will just set them to 1 ohm course in this case it does not really matter <laughs> we just want to have the currents and okay now our circuit looks more or less finished as in the exercise sheet here and the simulation works and runs if you click on the small menu here on this run button small person 
And then we need to select, okay, what would we like to simulate? And in this case, we just would like to calculate this DC operating point. Okay, and then we get some error message that says, please, your circuit does not have a conduction path to ground. Please flag one node as ground node. And this will be my ground <laughs> node here. That's why I have not named this and labeled this. And the ground symbol can be found there on top. And I will connect this. And so this is now our, our ground node, our reference node. Um, and if you later learn in the lecture how to do a nodal analysis there, you also select a reference node. And you, um, you give this node the number 0 and you don't count it. And this is, as we discussed before, this is due to we have k nodes, but only k minus 1 give you independent information. Um, and so the, the minus 1 node is this node here that we kick out by setting it as a reference. And so if you check the lower left corner, now it says this is ground, this is node A, this is node B, this is node C. Okay, now it should work if we hit the run button. Um, then we get the result as this text table and we can check the current through our source is 5 ampere, the same that we calculated um, here, there. Then the current that we calculated through this short circuit um, IAB was 1 ampere, so we can check here, this is this one here. 1 ampere and the remaining current that we calculated through this resistor here was also uh, or through this element was also 1 ampere uh, which is given over there. So it's maybe very strange and complicated to do this kind of circuit simulation in this case but it works. And we could also use a simulator to calculate this problem. Okay, excellent. Um, <laughs> more questions? So then, because we are, from my point of view, still quite good on time, um, as usual, I would give a short try and need to log in because I also have a pro license of ChatGPT. What happens? Um, if we give this task to ChatGPT, because now we already know the solution and we have some quite good idea, um, and yeah, for Omni, I think is quite good in this case. Okay, so can you please solve this task? And we insert the picture and upload it and check what it does. So and it says, we are given a circuit with these currents and the task is to calculate. So usually it, it just repeats what is given there. And we can use Kirchhoff's current law at different nodes. And we write it down for node A. Um, yeah, and this is what I told you last time. ChatGPT is not very good in using equations. So it just uses two here which is, yeah, from a mathematical point of view, somehow okay from an engineering and physical point, and, uh, point of view and so on, it's, it's, it's not very correct. Um, okay, and it finds out, okay, okay, we just know this one current there, so we cannot find the other two currents. So let's take a look at node B, uh, writes down an equation for node B, um, does some manipulation, once again the units are missing and it finds out that IAB is minus 1 ampere, which the, the, the value works but the sign is not correct. Um, but I think, okay, the other, so where, where's, where's the problem here? This is, if we, if we check once again, um, 
I2 is flowing onto the node. Yeah, so this this sign here is wrong, right? This so um, IAB is also flowing onto the node and not away from the node. <laughs> so uh, this formula, this assumption is already incorrect. Um, okay, this <laughs> this interestingly is then <laughs> correct once again. And the source current is also wrong. Okay, so I, 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 to be honest, I would have expected it to perform better here. And so now we could ask, why is the direction like this? But if, if you, um, yeah, as you see, it, it can be helpful to get a first approach onto some problem, but you can, as usual, never fully trust these results and have to think about them and make some plausibility check. And um, you also need to check the units of these calculations. Of course, now we could ask ChatGPT once again, hey, think about the direction <laughs> of the current, think about the units, and it would probably improve, but the, the first guess here, let's say, uh, confabulated answer is not, not the best. So our solution by hand is better. <laughs> 